Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So I want to show you a basic setup where I have an API which is created by this awesome fella. We'll go have a look at it real quick. It's called Optif and it's called REST API Goat. So we're going to have a look at it. We're also going to have a look at something else because I think this is pretty cool because we're chaining actually Postman into Burp Suite. Now, how does that work? You might be wondering, what am I doing? Well, it's really simple. Basically, whenever you want to proxy a tool into Burp Suite, all you do is set the proxy into the Burp Suite proxy. And there you go. We are now chaining tools together. It's as simple as that. Now you might already see this server variable here in front of me. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to show you guys what we have to do. So we get this if we go back to our URLs here. So let's go back. Basically on port 5001, I am running it at the moment. Uh, we get a, um, a postman, um, JSON as well. And this postman, JSON, will allow us to easily import those paths. But as you can see in here, they're all located on port 5000. Now I did this on purpose because I'm running it on 5001 on purpose, of course, because now I can copy them and I can show you how I make these ports and this local host IP address dynamic, because that's not what I want, of course. Um, and it's real simple, basically. Um, I just have to replace all of them in here. So let's say that I'm looking for localhost, going to replace all of those localhosts instances by server. And then I'm going to replace the port 5000 specifically by the port. And then we're going to, well, actually, I'm going to replace the number 5000 by um, the variable port. Easy as that, going to replace all of them again. Replace all. And there we go. Now when I post this into my postman, it's going to show me the proper URLs uh, and everything that I basically need. I can click the import button here and then I can click raw text to get whatever I need in here. And now if I continue, you'll see REST GOAT API will import it. I already had my server set, but if you don't, you can just click here and you can click edit and then you'll come into globals because I need to set my port anyway. Uh, port will be 5001 in our example. And then when we launch one of these requests, like the authenticate request, we should see here um, the port is still unresolved. So I must have made a mistake. Let's go quickly back to globals. Oh, right. I didn't save because if you don't save, it doesn't recognize that variable of course now port is recognized server is recognized and we can send our request off now at the moment we do that because we've set our proxy to burp suite we can actually go into burp suite and we can see what's going on now why would you want this for example let's say you have OS besat uh, and you try to do their crawling functionality but you want to do the rest in burp suite to explore your um explore your request for example that's possible uh, like we do in here we can do it with postman and chain it into burp suite to maybe do an active scan or a passive scan all of those things are possible and I wanted to show you that because I wanted to give you some ideas of how we can do that. Now as for this specific API of course I've shown you how to easily change the server and the port number. Now I'm going to go into some more vulnerabilities here because if I see the get customers list uh, I'm going to see all of these people from company one. Now, if I go to the get customer version ID, as you can see here, I see ID five, ID three and ID two. So that makes me wonder where ID one is. So we're going to go for the latest version of the API. And in here, I can see that I don't get any data returned to me. So that's really cool. That's how it's supposed to work. But in the older version of the API, it doesn't work that way. I am getting data back. So as you can see, this person does not belong to my company, but I am getting her data back. So that's a vulnerability in and of itself. This is going to be an IDOR uh, because I'm not supposed to see that person's data, of course. And it's directly referenced this object in this case. And the object is going to be a customer. <clears throat> Now, as we go on to the next vulnerability, we want to create a transfer. We're going to look at our 
people here again so we can create a transfer from number two to number three for a thousand euros let's say let's first try to create a transfer from number two to number three but let's make it 5000 euros let's go and try to go below zero so we've created a transfer now i can look at all of these transfers and as you can see the one is created so and then i can process the transfers and one the thing that is not mapped here in this specific postman uh, collection is that i can also process the transfers on a specific id that's also possible so we're going to do that now but as you can see uh, it doesn't really work no idea why um you can see it failed for number one so that's not good of course when we try to confirm this transaction for number one it says the transfer id was not in the pending state because the processing didn't work so that's clear now let's say we want to go for a thousand euros that should be possible because that person has it in our wallet but before processing this let's send it again and maybe again and let's try it again why not shall we so let's see all of the transfers right now as you can see there are a couple ready to withdraw 1000 euros from customer 2 and send them to customer 3 now the thing is it shouldn't be possible to do this more than once of course but since this is a vulnerability in the program as you can see two three four and five are pending so i can confirm two i can confirm three i can confirm four and i can confirm five of course now if i go and i request the list of my my customers again i can see that I am very badly in the negative on one account and badly in positive on one account. So that's a bit of the vulnerabilities that you can find in an API. It should give you an idea. Um, and of course, there's also routes that aren't mapped in here. And that's also how you can chain these tools because as you can see now in uh, Burp Suite, we have the complete website in here. And now you know how you can change that port number to a variable. That's really, really useful. And then we can have Burp Suite do our automatic scans if it wants to, uh, or we can just explore it more manually. Uh, you can also, of course, send things to the repeater here and make them go quicker. That, that's completely up to you. Um, but that's a little bit about how you chain those tools and a little bit about the vulnerabilities. Uh, you'll find this project that we've been hacking on, you'll find it in the description below as well. I would like to thank Optiv very much for creating this awesome project. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.